Hello friends, welcome back to Bruise with Ben. Now as promised, we're gonna do a little bit about gelatin today because I wanna add gelatin to my Mocktoberfest uh, to make sure it's nice and clear like a real lager would be. Now why add gelatin? The main reason is clarity. If you want a really clear beer, the gelatin is gonna bond with the yeast and the proteins and the other things in the beer, cause it to settle out and it'll be crystal clear. You could do this through cold conditioning if you got plenty of time, or through lagering, right? Which is basically long-term cold conditioning. But a lot of us want to drink our beer right away. So we want to get to it quickly, and that's where gelatin comes in. Uh, the Brewlosophy guys, they call gelatin liquid time because of how it speeds up this process. Uh, some say that when you add gelatin, it reduces hop flavor or uh, reduces some of the desirable flavors in your beer, you could argue that cold conditioning would do the same thing. We know that as the beer ages, the flavor is gonna change quite a bit. But let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. If we don't like it, we don't have to do it again. So how does gelatin work? Again, like I said, it grabs the proteins and the other haze forming particulate in the beer and helps it settle out to the bottom. You can add it at a couple different times. You can put the gelatin in your fermenter and then let it settle out, rack your beer into either your bottles or your keg, however you're serving, and do it that way. Or you can rack the beer out of the fermenter and add gelatin into the keg. Now, if you do that, you're gonna get a lot of sediment in your first, full pool, first few pools from the keg, so they're gonna look really nasty, but after that, it should clear up really well. Now, we've got a few different things here. Beer, because beer. We've got a Pyrex cup so that we can microwave the water, get it up to the temperature we want. Thermometer, so we know where we want to go. Spoon to mix, measuring spoons. And then this is our gelatin, it's powder. I got this online from Amazon, this is from BSG. Uh, you can even get like Knox gelatin at the grocery store and that'll work just fine too. So for our process, we're gonna warm up the water a little bit, which I've already done. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of gelatin, and we're gonna allow the gelatin to what they call bloom. So we're just gonna dump this in here, give it a teensy stir so we don't get a bunch of clumps. And then we're gonna let this bloom for 15 to 30 minutes, as patient as you can be. And that's just sort of letting it rehydrate there in the water. We'll come back in a few minutes when that's done and we'll start the next step in the process. <laughs> now that we've let the gelatin bloom, our next step is to bring it up to 150 degrees. Now to do this, we're gonna microwave it in short bursts, just seven seconds at a time. And we'll check between each one, stir it a little with our thermometer, see where we are. You don't want to bring this to a boil, and that's because if you do, you run the risk of just turning it into jello. I'm gonna risk it, that was only maybe 80 degrees, so I'm gonna do a whole 10 seconds. We'll see what happens. Two, one. I'll admit I don't have the best thermometer, so it's gonna take this a minute to get up to 10. A whopping 90 degrees. This may take a while.
So we finally made it to 150 degrees. Now, luckily, the next part of the process is super simple. All you have to do, take this, dump it in the beer, and let it wait for 24 to 48 hours. Hopefully, like we said before, that'll cause everything to fall down to the bottom. Then when we rack into the keg, we'll have nice clear beer. If you want to see if it works, check in in a week when we do our Oktoberfest tasting because we'll be tasting my Oktoberfest along with it. Like and subscribe. See you later, friends.